guys, what's going on? We're back out here at uh, Babylon Roof and Coops. That's a hell of a way to start a video, yo. So, this is Pigeon Path. This is gonna be a video, a new video about building a crane to my roof, uh, an electric hoist that could uh, carry a few hundred pounds up from the fire escape we got over here up to the roof. Um, there's gonna be, it's a pretty big build. There's a lot of components. Uh, there's a little, there's a lot of metal fab. There's some welding. There's Dondi, the new capuchin. It's gonna be a pivoting crane, so you can imagine there's only gonna be one connection point um, from the arm or the bar of the crane. So if you're looking at my building from the side, you have the building like this, and you know, it goes down three stories, whatever. Here you have the fire escape that comes down to the landing that's outside my window. Here's the fence of the fire escape, the ladder. Up here you have a chimney, a couple chimneys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 7 foot Schedule 40 plumber's pipe, round hollow pipe, mount it there, mount it to the chimney, bolt it in, maybe go around both so it's super supported. And into this, this T with the bushings will fit in and that will form the pivot point. And into that will lock in a 7 foot long inch and 3 quarter square tube. Onto that goes the electric hoist, there's the motor, and the aircraft cable winch. It'll probably be doubled over like that for extra load capacity. Steel hook and clevis, all that good stuff. This will be holding some kind of dope aluminum basket that can receive, you know, 50 pound sacks of pigeon feed, 50 pound sacks of dirt, bigger sacks of dirt, shit coming down. So that'll be welded onto this pin, this long, also, pretty thick walled, cold rolled. This is hot rolled, mild steel. This will receive these two bushings, silicone bronze. So these will go in there, and this whole thing will fit into a seven foot tall post. Here we go. Really? That stalled you out? Finally got it. Ah, hoo, 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 hoo. Rookie move. All right. This is what we want. This piece here. Ah, 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 ta, ta. So that's gonna slide down the shaft and ride against the top side of that bushing. This is Dondi the capuchin, my shot bird. Hey, Dondi. She's like a month old uh, orphan that came up here from South Carolina. She's a good bird. Good bird. Got it. Solid weld all the way around. One of the downsides of running this super powerful Lincoln TIG welder on 110 volt only is that the fan's always on, so sorry about the noise. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna weld this guy, this round tube, thick wall tube, to this thick wall square tube. Start with just tacking it. Woo, smoky in here. So you can see I cut some angle iron there for a triangular strut. So we're going to weld one on there, we're going to weld one on there, and maybe even a tab there and there. And this thing will be uh, close to complete. We're up to speed on this and you can see, so this will plop into the main tube and then I want the entire arm to slide into this. The problem is my length of 
one and three quarter square tube here, well, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit as well as it should. You can see it slides a little bit. Let's take a measurement of capuchin with the caliper. Let's see how wide she is. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, you see that? Didn't tighten this enough. You see it bouncing around like that? Danger. Ah, this piece cheap of chit cut off wheel. The, the little thing that holds it, it's little shaft thing. It's hub, it broke off. What a POS. So of course this is the only goddamn cutting wheel I have. So instead, I have to resort to cutting this with a saber saw and just dragging it along at a really dramatic angle so that tip doesn't come in contact with the other side of the material. Bash the thing in. Now we're gonna work our way down and just tweak it little by little. So I was able to beat the dang thing on. So now what we're gonna do, I'll go in I'll grind this out a little bit and I'm gonna run a weld, I guess, down the whole damn thing. Why not, huh? Don't want no valley. Maybe we'll put some extra reinforcement there, but I think this thing, I think this will be strong enough. So now we're going ahead and we're working on the, uh, the post that's going to hold the crane, the vertical section. And we're welding on these brackets uh, there, there, both sides, knock some holes in here. And these are going to bolt into the chimney. We're going to strap and bolt this whole thing to the chimney that's up there. So you can see what's going to happen is there's the vertical. There's the fire escape. The crane will be able to come out like that and drop down to the fire escape. And then it'll be on this pivot point so then it can swing over to here. So we're able to, you know, deploy our load, drop it off. And I'm thinking when it's, when it's not in use, we'll swing the hoist around so it faces this way and it's not perpetually hanging out over the backyard. So we'll push it out. Out there. 
Here's my bag of power tools. See, so we got circ saw, regular drill, torque drill, some Kansas spray paint, some Kansas screws, walkie talkie, maybe 25 pounds all told. Check the balance. Balance looks good. It's pretty scary from down here. So I'll go up with it. Okay, here we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> oh man. So that's that's about a five foot cantilever. Come on over and watch this. Oh, glorious, swinging it right over, right over the roof. So here we have it, finished product. That's a 400 pound rated hoist on a seven foot arm. Strapped, bolted, glued to my chimney. Pivot point on a bronze bushing. Overlooking my three story fire escape. So hopefully in time I like to make this tighter, study how strong that is. Because one of these days we're going to have to put a lawn chair on this thing. Have a, uh, what's it called, a dumb waiter access for people. Whoa.